Oh my God, look at these rooms. This is the size of the room. Oh my God, it's so I'm claustrophobic. I want to get out. हम लोग इस समय मदीना जिसको ये यहाँ पर मोराको में ओल्ड सिटी कहा जाता है वहाँ का वॉक कर रहे हैं और यहाँ पर अभी बाज़ार खुला नहीं है स्ट्रीट्स बहुत ही छोटी हैं कुछ तो स्ट्रीट्स ट्वेल्व टू ट्वेंटी फोर फीट की हैं और यहाँ पर जैसे कि आप देख सकते हैं कि दुकानें हैं और यहाँ पर घर भी बहुत ही खूबसूरत है दो तरह के घर हैं एक को कहते हैं दार और एक को कहते हैं रियाद दार बहुत तो छोटे घर जो होते हैं उनको दार बोलते हैं जिसके दो या तीन बेडरूम होते हैं और जो बड़े घर होते हैं उनको रियाद बोलते हैं जिसमें फाइव टू सिक्स बेडरूम्स होते हैं और बीच में एक उनके जैसे कि हमारे वहाँ इंडिया में हम टी वी में भी देखते हैं शोज में भी देखते हैं पुराने ज़माने की हवेली होती है सो so, हवेली टाइप है और बीच में बरामदा है एंड इट्स वेरी कलरफुल है यहाँ पर यहाँ पर uh, आप देख सकते हैं कि जूस की दुकानें हैं और जिनके डोर्स बहुत बड़े और खूबसूरत हो मै गाश लगे तो डोंकी आ रहा है और ये डोंकीज़ यूज होते हैं गार्बेज उठाने के लिए तो रोज़ सुबह डोंकीज़ आती हैं गार्बेज उठाने के लिए यहाँ यहाँ पर ये इनका पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन है गार्बेज का सैनिटेशन का we have the father and then we have the son the tomb is dating back to 827 but the mosque was built till about 17th century by a famous king called the king Moulay Ismail so he is considered as a holy person because him and his father they were the first who brought and introduced Islam to Morocco and founded the first Islamic dynasty called the Idrisid dynasty that's why they are the holiest person in here in Morocco so of course for Moroccan people whenever they will have the chance to be in here please they would like to visit the tomb of the holiest man in Morocco to get what we call the baraka blessing and to mark their visit they will buy some candles that they will like inside put some money in some wooden boxes Then go next to the tomb and put their hands and ask for blessing and wishes. This is the back side of the tomb, so the people they can come just quick, put some coins in here, okay, and put their hands and ask for the baraka and wishes. That's the best way, which will take only a few seconds. Okay, you can see it when you will be walking through here, please, to your left side. Madrasa called Atari Madrasa, a theological residential college for students dating back to the 14th century. Okay, so let's get inside. Please mind your steps. Madrasa hai, madrasa jo ki Islamic school hai, jahan par bhi log Islam sikhaya jata hai. और यहाँ पर स्टूडेंट्स आते हैं तो अब हम इन साइड ऑफ द मदरसा ऑफ फैज एशियन सिटी में जा रहे हैं सो दिस इज द स्कूल मदरसा हम हर समय सुनते हैं मूवीज में देखते हैं और आज आपको दिखा रहे हैं कि यहाँ का मदरसा मराठों में फैज का मदरसा कैसा है सो लेट्स तो हर 
जगह मिडल में फाउंटेन होते हैं इनके यहाँ पर और ये विंडोज आप देख सकते हैं छोटी छोटी विंडोज हैं अब इसका क्या सिग्निफिकेंस है अभी हमें गाइड बताएंगे so the first word, Nowadays we do use it to call primary school, which is for the kids between the age of six to twelve. But this building was built in 14th century, and in 14th century, madrasa means another thing. At that time, it means a theological residential college for students to study and live. It was a religious school for men to study religion to become an imam, prayer leader. We have 12 madrasas like this in the Medina of Fes. There are only two in Marrakesh and one in Mecca. So that's why Fes is still considered as the religious capital of Morocco since the 9th century till today, because of the numbers of madrasas. So the students who are interested to study in those madrasas, they need to pass a test and they can be from different countries, not just Morocco. Uh, so they need to pass a test because they have a limited places. Like this one was able to receive like 50 students for four years. They won't receive any more till that the group of 50 students will be graduated because they were teaching them in that classroom, feeding them and giving them a space to spend the night upstairs for four years for free. That's why. And they need to pass a, a test also to choose the smartest. Because during the four years, please, they need to study very hard to become an imam. And the first thing that they have to do, please, is to memorize by heart the holy book, the Quran, 650 pages by heart. The second thing that they have to memorize by heart is what we call hadith. What did the Prophet Muhammad say? 400 pages. The third thing that they have to memorize by heart is what we call sharia, the Islamic law. 500 pages, all that in four years, please. Then they are graduated as an imams. The system today is still the same, but today it will take them 12 years rather than four. Because we have Facebook, WhatsApp, phones, <coughs> TVs, and so on. But before, there was no way of destruction. You would just start and start. And when they are graduated, of course, they can work as an imam at any mosque in the world. And in this beautiful building, dating back to the 14th century, we can see a very beautiful architecture that we call the Moorish and Danusian architecture, originally from south of Spain. So, if you did have the chance to visit Alhambra Palace in Granada, it's similar to this one. This one we call it a small copy of Alhambra Palace, because that architecture is originally from there. So, to distinguish that architecture from the other arch architectures, you have to look for what we call the five elements of the Moorish architecture. So the first element I'm talking about is the carved cedar wood of the top. They were able to get the cedar wood from the cedar forest south of Fez in the middle Atlas Mountains. But also they prefer to use cedar because it's the kind of wood that can last for 1500 years. All the wood you can see there please is from the 14th century. Even with the rain and the sun. Please. It still exists in today. Second element please is the carved cluster all around the building. But in 14th century, of course, there was no plaster. At that time, they were just getting a white powder from a stone that they will mix with the egg water that they use as a glue. Mix it together, pass it on the wall, make it flat, which it will dry, and start to carve it from the wall. Yes. And when we did some renovations recently, you can tell the difference between the old and the new from the arch right there. The white shiny one is the new one. The darker one is the old one. But you can tell that more than 80% of the plaster in here is still the original one. Then the third element, please, is those cursive script and tile work. This is still for me the most amazing handicraft work of Fez. Especially the cards, the patterns and the cards. So, the artists make the files of the work. What they do is that they will prepare bigger pieces of tiles with different colors in the workshop. Then they will bring it to here. Then they will start to cut small piece, give the right shape to it, and put it on the wall, then move to the next one. I'm talking about even the small pieces like this. And when they are doing that on the wall, please, there is no pattern that they are following. It's all from their imagination. So that's why you can find that the patterns and the colors are different from one place to another, because it was done by different artisans. And now, in the ceramic-like section, where the artisans are still making this, they do make tables and fountains from it. They do it even upside down, please. You have to see them collecting those tiles together. 
upside down. I called them at that time the people of puzzle game. It looks like they are playing puzzle. And they're gonna work on that piece for like 16 weeks, 20 weeks, depending how big it is. When it's done, and they will reverse it, the first, you know, uh, the, you know, the smallest tiles with a different color or the wrong color, the whole work is gone. Yeah, they need to be very smart and patient to do it. And then we have those cursor scripts. Those are block signs which are carved, please. And this is what we call exactly calligraphy. We have seven different calligraphies for the Arabic language. So for someone who wants to become a calligrapher, he or she needs to study for eight years. They are real artists. Even for me that I did my studies in Arabic, still for me it's not really easy to read it. Because we do right from right to left, one line. But in here I can show you that they put sometimes one, two, three. Three words or three letters, one up in each one. To look more as artistic. That's why it's not easy to read it quickly. Then the fourth element, please, is the marble on the floor. The black one is from Morocco, but the white one, it's Carrara marble from Italy. At that time, they were able, talking about the 14th, 15th, 16th century, they were able to exchange square meter of Carrara marble, like the big piece on the step in here, for one kilo of sugar. Because salt and sugar was more valuable than anything else at that time. By the beginning of the 20th century, the Italians, they found it was not a good thing, but it was too late. Because the sugar is gone, but the marble is still existing in here. Then the fifth element is, is the fountain. So remember, wherever you see wood, plaster, tiles, marble fountain, that's the Moorish Andalusian architecture. So please, can you tell me where did you see it? Here in Morocco? The place? Any place? Riyadh. Exactly. In your hotel. So, in the Riyadh, the people, they will have this kind of architecture in their houses because they are the only ones who can afford the money to have this kind of architecture in their houses. And uh, you find also that they did add another architecture to that Moorish Andalusian architecture that I was talking about. What we call the architecture that we call it Palmetta architecture. It's derived from palm trees. I'm talking about those columns, please. It looks like palm trees connected to each other. This is originally from Iraq, from the 12th century. On those columns, please, you can find that there is a disc on the bottom, a disc on the top, the marble column in the middle, but the marble column is not really attached to those discs. This is to support and hold the heavy weight of the wall, but also it will give the ability to the wall to move if there'll be any earthquake. Anti-earthquake system from 12th century. So even at that time, they thought about earthquakes, please. That's originally from Iraq. And Morocco was influenced by a very strong earthquake, which was in 1755. That was the earthquake of Lisbon in Portugal. And many Medinas in Morocco, they were destroyed. So, uh, I don't know if you were like in Meknes yesterday. Yeah? And you drove with the big bus inside the Medina. It's going to be the same thing in Marrakech. Because that part of the Medina, please, it was destroyed by the earthquake of 1755. So the way they rebuilt that part after the earthquake, they made the streets wider. But first, it was the only Medina that resisted to that earthquake because of this architecture. Archi ar architecture. That's why it's chosen by UNESCO as a UNESCO site. Because it's still authentic since the 9th century till today. On our way here, just next to the Madrasa, did you see that there is a big door for a, to a big building? You know what is that building? It's what we call Karawidin University. The oldest university in the world. Written even Oxford and Sorbonne. Dating back to 859, the mid of the 9th century, and it was built by a lady. Her name is Fatima Fihriya. Yes, I know that many people wow. did never hear about it. And it was functioning from 859 till 1961. And a lot of famous people, they were graduated from that place. There are exactly 14 entrances to that university. And when I told you uh, 14 entrances, you can have an idea about the size of the building. But also it means 14 classrooms. So on each classroom, the students, they were able to study something different. For centuries, like mathematics, logic, grammar, astrology, philosophy, medicine, history, geography, and so on. And for centuries, there were a lot of people who were graduated from there, famous people. 
uh, did you ever hear about the famous Jewish philosopher from the 11th century called Maimonides? Yes. He was graduated from there. The famous traveler called Ibn Battuta, he was also you know, graduated from there. So it had an international reputation for centuries. And uh, seven months ago, they found a document in Egypt dating back to 1207. That document, it was a certificate of graduation of an Egyptian man as a doctor from there, signed by three professors from there. They put it now in a museum. So since 1961, they don't use it as a university, but they still use it as a mosque, because they built a bigger university in the new city. So from 1961 till today, it's still functioning as a mosque, and it is considered as the second largest mosque in Morocco, after the big mosque of Casablanca. That's one can gather almost 20,000 people in one time inside, from the 9th century. Then, can I have your attention for another two minutes, please, to go to the inside this classroom, please? I have a question. Yes. That uh, university was started by a woman. Yeah. And uh, why some countries don't want women to go to school? Well, it depends on the mentality, of course. So it is not written in the any holy book. Here in Morocco, the people, even now, like in the countryside, I know that in some countries, the people they don't like to send their daughters like to the school. Maybe the sons. Now, in here, please, it's equal. And now. The government, they are encouraging the people in the countryside by giving them like money and so on to send their kids to school, boys and girls. So Morocco is one of the very few countries, you know, in the world where, it, where they don't mention the gender in the contract for work. <laughs> Never. Interesting. Where is that university? Where is that university that's now lost? 800. 859. Is the one that was passed by where there was a bigger door. Well, I, I will stop for you to take pictures, of course, from outside. Okay? So please, this is the classroom here. This is where the 50 students used to study in here. And at that time, please, they would just put in the carpet, sit on the floor, and they would use just the board and the piece. Okay? The imam or the teacher, they would sit right here up on the chair, chair with a long bamboo stick. <coughs> in case if someone is not paying attention, so he can just smoke his head. <laughs> <Two weeks. coughs> so then he will receive like a small chapter of the Quran, for example, that they have to write on the board. Then they will get just enough time to memorize it. Like 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. Can you imagine to have 50 students trying to memorize that with very loud voices? Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. But you have to know please. If you will come by the main entrance, you won't hear anything. You know why? It's because of the beautiful carpet with the dome that we have in here. The dome, it's not for decoration, it has a function. That's why in many buildings you can find the domes, especially the schools. So, whatever you would say, the dome will observe all the loud voices at the top. You can buy the main entrance, you can't hear anything. That's why we have the domes. And when they are done, students when they are done what they have on the board, they will go to the fountain to wash it, then get back and write another thing. Then when it's time to go to pray, they will stop the classroom and they will use this room as a mosque. So that's why we have what we call the mihrab, the niche, the special place for the imam. So every niche in every mosque in the world, it's facing Mecca. But the niche, we don't use it to know, you know the direction of Mecca. Because we can put just a sign in simple wall. But the niche had a function too, because the Imam will you know, stand up in here facing Makkah, the prayers behind him in parallel lines. And the function of the niche is to be an echo, because at that time there was no electricity or microphones. So when the Imam will stand up right here, so of course, whatever he will say, the people can in the back can hear him easily. Sir, can you hear me easily from there? Without the whisper? No, without with the whisper. Move the, you know. Can you hear me easily from there? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's the function of the dome, please. Of the niche, sorry. That's the function of the niche. So that's why even when you do build new mosques, they would prefer to keep the same architecture. Because one day, the electricity is gone, or the microphone is broken down, the whole technique is still functioning. That's why we have those niches in mosques. 
सो अब हम जा रहे हैं देखने डॉम जहाँ पर के जो स्टूडेंट्स यहाँ पर रहते थे वो जमाने में फिफ्टी स्टूडेंट्स थे यहाँ पर और और अब उनके जो रूम्स हैं तो वो देखने जाते हैं नहीं तो इसका मतलब ये लोग नीचे सोते थे जमीन में सोते थे तो ये आई थिंक इट्स अबाउट वट नॉट इवन टेन बाई टेन आई थिंक रूम इज वन टू थ्री सेवन बाई मे बी सेवन बाई सेवन और सेवन बाई टेन सिक्स बाई सिक्स तो नहीं होगा आई डोंट नो माई गॉश या फिफ्टी रूम्स ना दैट मीन्स दे हैड इंडिविजुअल रूम क्लस्ट्रोफोबिक गेट आउट लुक एट द कॉरिडोर अबाउट टू 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 थ्री फीट की सिर्फ तो कॉरिडोर है इनका ये विंडोज बनाई हुई है इन्होंने नीचे देखने के लिए ये स्ट्रीट लेवल के विंडोज हैं 